Well, welcome back. We're going to do another video on bougies. Now, or endotracheal tube uh, introducers, as I, I try to hold it the right way. Bougies can come in different forms. Uh, so a bougie is a small uh, device that can be used for um, introducing an endotracheal tube uh, into the trachea. They're particularly useful uh, if we're having a hard time getting a proper visualization or uh, having a hard time uh, getting the tube uh, up into placement, even if we have good visualization. For an example, uh, if we're using a uh, hyperacute angle video, laryngo uh, uh, video laryngoscopy. So uh, bougie uh, has been uh, in up to date, would be recommended that you can use it anytime uh, that you have uh, an incomplete view of the glottic opening or the glottis. Uh, in particular, if the glottis is really anterior, uh, and additionally, any difficult airway, including those that might have airway swelling, uh, as well as those uh, patients uh, that may have uh, C-spine precautions or, or the like. Uh, as we um, uh, use a, a, a bougie, it can be used uh, for any patient uh, that has any view. So it can be a grade one view where you have a complete glot uh, view of the glottis. And, and I would recommend that you use the bougie uh, and get comfortable with it. Uh, you don't want to ever pull out a tool uh, that you're not comfortable with in a difficult airway. So we'd like to get familiar. So the fact that you're uh, welcome to use a bougie in a grade one view is a great way to become more and more proficient at its use. Um, so uh, with a bougie, it makes it easier to get the tip of the bougie into the glottic opening. Uh, but sometimes uh, we can have uh, some challenges advancing the tube over top of the bougie itself. Um, now, it's important that any time that we go to uh, utilize a bougie, that we're going to uh, take steps uh, to try to improve our grade one view. So if you have an incomplete view, I would always encourage you, if we work our way down here, down the tongue, uh, and we work our way into position. Uh, if we had this kind of a view, even with a bougie, this is intubatable with a bougie, where we can see the arytenoid cartilage and a bit of the vocal cord, so a 2A view. But uh, we would prefer uh, the greater the uh, glottic opening that we can get, so whether that's elevated head lift, or uh, if we uh, do some external laryngeal manipulation, or by manual laryngoscopy, uh, uh, sometimes we need to go in and scoop up the epiglottis. Uh, and particularly with hyperacute direct laryngoscopy, uh, George Kovach would remind us that we want to get far away. What he would talk of is a 50-50 view that you see 50% of the glottic opening and all the glottis itself is only occupying 50% of the screen. So assuming that you've got your ideal view for intubating. So if it's a Macintosh blade, you've got the best view you can create. Uh, and if it's a, a hyperangulated view, uh, getting that 50-50 view is what George uh, would recommend. Um, so those things are, are dependent on airway access. And uh, I find that a lot of students that I teach have a little bit of misunderstanding when we say airway access. All we're trying to compare uh, often is the oral axis uh, to the phary pharyngeal axis or laryngeal axis. Um, uh, so uh, the mouth uh, kind of down to your throat, you can think of this as two tubes uh, that are listening. And the ways that we can improve this view, often w w the first thing we talk about is head lift. It, often what we describe as sniffing position in the literature is that we want, and as we put the patient in a sniffing position, the uh, angle between these two tubes, now they're not perfectly straight, often they're some, uh, as some would call these curves, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you can see as we put sniffing position, we'd get more of a straight line between the axis of your mouth to the axis of your trachea. Um, so uh, the things that we can do now uh, that will, th those will help us as we're trying to place the tube. But it's also really useful for us to think of airway access uh, as we're inserting a bougie uh, into the device and thinking where could we get hauled, hauled up. So often you can advance the bougie, we'd advance the bougie in through the vocal cords. And then once we're past the vocal cords, we'd go down 10, 12 centimeters more. Uh, we'd uh, often get hold up uh, at the carina or a, a rotation to the carina. And then we'd go to advance uh, the tube. Now with the bougie, we can run into problems with advancing the tube over top of 
uh, into the trachea over top of the bougie. So the first area that you can get problems with this too is just as you're going through, uh, not quite through the vocal cords. And I, I'm using that as the beginning and we'll show you, in the, uh, show you on the mannequin. But we can get held up as you can see that distal tip uh, is bumping into that corrugated plastic. And that would be bumping into our retinoid cartilage. Particularly, this would be true if our, our, our airway access was really not lined up straight. You can see that the straighter this tube is coming in, the less likely it's going to get caught. Now, often we're on a fairly steep angle as we come in, uh, and the trachea is kind of like this. We might be doing some external laryngeal manipulation or what have you, but we're getting, uh, we have a fairly steep angle, and it's very easy to get that distal tip of the tube caught on, and I hope you can see, uh, can get caught on uh, the arytenoid cartilage. The other place, so that's the first place that you can have problems advancing an endotracheal tile of, over a bougie. The second place is as we're past the arytenoid cartilage, we can get caught uh, on the uh, tracheal rings. That's inside as the tube uh, is, uh, as we, particularly if we have big head lift on the patient, um, uh, that we're using exaggerating sniffing positions like or something like that. But we can get caught. George talks about this being like an S that can form is the angle as we come in through the mouth. But we can get caught on those tracheal rings. And, and the answer that, to that is to rotate uh, clockwise. And that puts the bevel so that it doesn't catch and it'll slide right in. So with, with the arytenoid cartilage, what we're gonna do if we get caught on it, is we're gonna pull back and then rotate counterclockwise. And that will allow that bevel, not that tip of that endotracheal tube not to catch on that tube. If we're past the arytenoid cartilage and meeting holdup, then we're gonna rotate the other way if we're meeting uh, resistance as we push through, as we uh, go through. Remember that as we're doing this, we're gonna be advancing with um, with gentle pressure. Uh, if you push aggressively into the arytenoid cartilage and try to twist the tube, it kind of holds the end of the tube and it doesn't rotate off easily. Whereas if you pull back, rotate, then it'll slide through. So we'll show you what that looks like. But important to have an understanding of airway axis uh, as you're using a bougie and then where we can have problems getting uh, help as we try to advance the tube. So uh, I'll show you with, uh, I'm using a King Vision with a hyper acute angle blade. Uh, so we'll be able to see that. Uh, so we'll rotate into uh, position uh, as we're gonna use the bougie. Uh, we would get down and get the view that we want. Uh, if this was a Macintosh blade uh, view, we would be looking for a grade one view. So we'd be using head lift or external laryngeal manipulation or by manual. Um, uh, uh, or scooping up the epiglottis. With a hyperacute angle, uh, we can make our, our uh, the best, easiest time to pass an endotracheal tube is uh, with uh, having a, a far away view, what George would call that 50-50 view. So we're gonna get that 50-50 view, and then we're gonna insert our bougie down, and you can see that the bougie gives me great dexterity. Now, the more curved, I love the pocket bougie. What you can do on a sterile surface is round that bougie beforehand, because remember, we're kind of aiming up. It's If we're having difficulty getting anterior on the patient in the view of the person using the laryngoscope, this is getting superior. So when we go in, we can kind of get more uh, of an ability. And you can see that I can trace uh, a fair amount uh, uh, of the a posterior aspect of that glottic opening through too. So you have some great dexterity by rotating back and forth. So we would advance down uh, and uh, until we got hold up about 10 uh, to 12 centimeters below. So you can watch your gradients on your bougie. This one has 10 centimeter uh, increments. This one has one centimeter increments that go up by fives in the larger marks. So as we advance our, uh, as we advance our bougie over the top, we're going to be mindful uh, that we can where we can get held up as we try to advance that tube. Now, often as you're watching me struggle with this, you would have an assistant help you with this rather than uh, doing this uh, yourself is just have someone else advance the tube over. So anytime we're putting something in the mouth, the first we'd look into the mouth as the tube goes by and then what goes out of our view, we're going to have that 50-50 view. Now, I want to show you that getting caught in the arytenoid cartilage. So if the tube is straight up and down, it can often get caught on that arytenoid cartilage following that um, uh, that curve of the tube. Uh, if you rotate it uh, to clockwise, it becomes even worse. Whereas if I pull back, rotate counterclockwise, 
the tube just slides right on in. Um, so, and watch what happens if I'm held up on the arytenoid cartilage and then I try to twist counterclockwise, it takes a lot of pressure before it will come uh, free. So rather than shoving into the arytenoid cartilage, getting hold up and then trying to deal with it, pull back, rotate your tube, and then lower down and advance in. Now we can get caught on uh, as we're going into the trachea, so uh, there's some things there that we can do. We can uh, lessen our view, lower our head down if we're using really uh, exaggerated head lifts. So we can put them back towards sniffing position, which will help al align those axes. So we have less of a, a steep corner as we're going through. With the, the blade, with the laryngoscope, we can lift up uh, on the tongue. Now, if we have a far away view with a hyper acute angle blade and we lift up, we lift the uh, further away from that glottic opening. We lift that tongue uh, and we lessen that corner on our way down to the trachea. If we're right in really close, and this is a common mistake uh, with a hyperacute angle, is we get this beautiful view uh, uh, of our glottic opening. Now I'm going to cut on my endotracheal tube. Uh, we get this beautiful view like this. But if you see it as I pull up, what can happen is I actually pull the, the glottic opening up and I maintain that steep angle going in. Whereas if I pull the tongue back, I pull back and get that 50-50 view that George talks about uh, is that we can get, uh, when we maintain there and we lift up, we're pulling on the tongue uh, back away from the glottic opening. So we're lessening that steep angle as we go in. So we're de lifting some of that corner out of our way and flattening that angle for us. Um, so maintaining tension uh, with a hyperacute angle in a far away distance or maintaining tension with uh, like pressure on your learner scope if you're using Macintosh can make it easier uh, to advance your tube. When you're advancing your tube, uh, as I'm just looking at my notes to open that I don't forget things, uh, when you're advancing your tube, it's important um, that uh, we uh, remember where we're trying to go with the tube. The trachea, if I was laying the trachea, the trachea is going to be in a straight line like this. Often as I'm watching students advance this tube, they'll kind of advance the tube almost like they're trying to push the tube to the back of the throat. And what we're trying to do there is often is we're trying to rotate that tube up. So even with the bougie, as you advance it or the endotracheal tube, try to make a motion that takes the distal tip and it aims it superiorly in your view or anterior uh, on the patient uh, as you go. Um, so other things you can do to help is, so I've mentioned lower the head down back into kind of regular sniffing position if you're really extreme uh, in your sniffing position. Don't overly compress uh, that larynx, that would be true of if you're using external laryngeal manipulation, that would be true of any time uh, that you're uh, pushing on uh, the, the voice box, uh, that you don't want to squeeze that closed and make it more of a narrowing space. Um, and then I mentioned, uh, make sure that you get back. So when we're, I'll, I'll go right through that procedure once more uh, to show you uh, the bougie and we'll talk about some suggestive, suggestive things that are good. So we go in, uh, we get a view uh, that we like for the device that we're using. I'm using a uh, hyperangulated. Remember, if I had this view with a hyperangulated, that's not a 50-50 view. I could do a head lift to try to improve my view, external laryngeal manipulation, bimanual laryngoscopy. Uh, I could uh, it, it pull, make sure I pull back a right distance if I'm using hyperangulated, or if I'm using a Macintosh, go in and pick up uh, that epiglottis. So once you have the view that you want, let's pretend that we're using a Macintosh device. So we get this kind of a view here. Uh, and then we, we, let's say that's the best view that we can get uh, with our Macintosh device. And we advance our bougie uh, into the glottic opening. Uh, we're going to maybe feel subtle tracheal clicks as we're advancing down. I'd say anytime we're advancing anything into the trachea, this is finger movement. So plant your, fin your finger on the, uh, on the patient's face and use your fingers rather than your arm uh, so that you don't uh, exert excessive force. We go down, we meet resistance around uh, 10 centimeters past uh, the glottic open, 10 to 12 centimeters. Then we're going to take our tube and put our tube over the top as we can try to get that on. And once again, an assistant will help you. Uh, now, once we're maintaining, we want to get to the position. Uh, so as we insert the tube, I'd advance, rotate that 
counterclockwise before you insert that into the glottic opening as I get off my tube, sorry. <clears throat> um, so uh, rotate counterclockwise and that will just slide right in. If I meet resistance in the trachea, flip the other way. And if you're not sure, just rotate back and forth. Uh, and then we'll advance in uh, to our appropriate depth as we could see either by the black line to the vocal cords or insert a little, if you can't see the glottic opening completely, insert a little deep uh, and then we'll confirm with end tidal CO2 uh, with everyone and then we'll auscultate to make sure we have air entry bilaterally. So I hope that that is really helpful uh, as you're utilizing the bougie, a fantastic tool uh, for uh, troubleshooting particularly difficult airways but I'd get into the habit of using the bougie uh, so that you're comfortable with it. Until next time, we'll see you then.